What if I told you that you could create custom Copilots? Microsoft Copilot is regarded as the most powerful productivity tool on the planet. And Microsoft just announced that you can create custom ones. This naturally develops questions that need answers. Questions like, how do I start building these Copilots today? Wait, so you're telling me you can build custom Copilots for free? How do custom Copilots even work after all? At this point in time, I have zero experience with the Copilot Studio. It's time to hang on tight as we answer each one of those questions as I go through my first experience using Copilot Studio. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is navigate to this link here. It is in the description down below. This is the Copilot Studio main webpage. If you scroll down, currently there's an option to try it for free. If you select this, then you can go ahead and sign up for a trial using Copilot. If you do not have access to an organization and you would like to create a trial one for yourself to test out this functionality, go ahead and click this link here. This is a video of mine that's gonna walk you through how to create a trial environment. But once you have this, go ahead and sign in and then you can navigate down through these options by entering your phone number, it does say a business phone number. You can enter a personal one. That is what I did here. Go ahead and confirm your details and hit get started. After a couple loading screens, it's going to bring you to the copilotstudio.microsoft.com. Again, let's go ahead and click through these different windows. You'll see on this screen that this is showing you that Power Virtual Agents is now converted into Microsoft Copilot Studio. This is a good time to mention that Microsoft Copilot Studio is completely brand new functionality that was actually just announced last month as of the time of recording this video. I am making a video coming out next week over what Microsoft Copilot Studio is in more detail. So if you're interested in that, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Anyways, once you do this, you can go ahead and create your Copilot. I'm going to call my Copilot Citizen Developer. You select the language and then if you would like to boost the conversations you can select a website this would be particularly useful in situations where say you're an organization and you want your co-pilot or the chatbot to reference a SharePoint site or an FAQ site you would enter that website URL here you will see that there are some advanced options as well this is going to be things like customizing the co-pilot icon what solution your copilot is going to be added in, as well as the schema name for your copilot. Once you have all of these settings configured, go ahead and select create. Once you hit create, you are going to be greeted with this lovely little screen that just says setting up your copilot. I found that after a few minutes, about three to four, I got an email from Microsoft saying, hey, your copilot is ready. This screen did not automatically refresh for me. So feel free to refresh this every couple minutes or so, or if you are able to see your email notifications, then you will get an email there. And when you do, you are actually going to get a link that directs you back to your new copilot, or if you just refresh this website, then it will bring you directly to it. So if we go ahead and navigate to our copilot and open it up, you're gonna be greeted for the first time with a few welcome screens. Something that is cool that I'm unsure if it was available with Power Virtual Agent, but this first screen will show you that you can now add images and videos to your topics or the bot responses. But once you navigate through these tutorial or welcome pop-ups, you're gonna be greeted by this screen here. Now, if you've never used Power Virtual Agents before, Power Virtual Agents were essentially made up of topics and arrows directing the topics. I'm sure you've already begun to notice this, but if you are familiar with the Power Virtual Agent Studio, then this new Copilot Studio is beginning to feel very familiar. If you have any experience with Power Virtual Agents and creating them, then using the Copilot Studio is gonna be a breeze for you. Now a topic, simply think of it as a conversation node or something the chatbot would say. So for example, a topic could outline, what can I help you with today? and then you could have an arrow from that topic to another topic. So let's say the response to what can I help you with today is I need help with my order. Then you have another topic for order issues 
and there would be an arrow from the what can I help you with today topic to the order issues topic. Fortunately, I think it is fairly intuitive. The reason this is important is the Copilot Studio follows the exact same structure. The studio allows you to have a canvas of sorts where you can see all of these topics and how they relate to one another. So if you are starting with a fresh bot, the first thing I'm gonna recommend you do is create a topic and you can do that by selecting this button here. Hey, Editing Griff here. I'm editing this video and I just realized I somehow didn't talk about the most important part, which is turning on the generative AI. The first thing you're gonna wanna do once you're in the studio is go to your bot and then on the left hand side, you're gonna find a generative AI tab. This tab is where you can opt in to boost your bot using generative answers. Without this, your bots will just be boring old power virtual agents. Lastly, don't forget to save and back to the video. Now these topics can be completely custom for your business, but something that I think is really cool is there are now AI generated suggestion topics for you to implement. Let's say we want to create an address topic where we need the person's address information before we can go any further. Fortunately, we have a suggested AI generated address topic we can use. Let's go ahead and select that now. You can see here that just by clicking that, it went ahead and added all of the necessary address topics needed in order to capture this information. It also added the variables needed to store the information when the person talking with the chatbot were to say where they live. Let's say we like this topic, you can actually go ahead and save it in the top right hand corner. Now I actually wanna go back and see all of our topics. You can see here that when I created the chatbot, it actually created several out of the box ones. You will notice that all of these were created three days ago. That is when I actually created this bot at the beginning of the video that you saw. But now my new address bot is only a few seconds ago. Let's go ahead and update our chatbot. So for example, the greeting message that we get reads, Hello, I am citizen developer, a virtual assistant. Just so you are aware, I sometimes use AI to answer your questions. How can I help? I don't think this is very personal. It's very wordy. Let's go ahead and update this in our bot to shorten it. So if you actually go ahead and navigate up to the system tab here, you're gonna find conversation start. And now here is this message. Let's go ahead and open that. Let's say that we don't need this middle sentence. We want them to say they are a virtual assistant, but we don't really want this just so you know message. Now let's say that for whatever reason, we want the users of this bot to know that it has AI capabilities. Let's go ahead and just say that instead of it's a virtual assistant, let's say that it's an AI virtual assistant. All right, so that is updated. Let's go ahead and save our conversation start. If we actually navigate back to topics and hit refresh on our conversation, you will see now that the updated start conversation node is correct. Another way to update this is you can actually just select on the chat itself. So if I click on this message, you'll see that it will actually take me to the conversation start. Let's go ahead and continue to dig into how we can navigate this Microsoft Copilot Studio. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at an existing topic that it already created for me. I'm gonna use this lesson one topic. It looks like this topic is designed to outline the store hours. So if the person were to chat, hey, what are your store hours? Then it would spit back out this message here. You can see that if you actively use this chat window to the left, it will show you different check marks as it's going through the process in the topic here. Now let's go ahead and make some updates to one of our topics using this new Copilot Studio. I'm gonna go ahead and select on this lesson two topic that was automatically created for me. And what this is doing is asking the customer or the person interacting with the bot which store location they would like information on. You can see here that there is a generated question with options for the user and depending on their selection is going to provide them with the specific information. Something that I think would be valuable to add to this topic, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new node where after the copilot sends the response of the store information, it is gonna ask if they wanna know information about that store's hours. We fortunately already have a pre-built topic, which is topic one, that outlines these hours. So in our text box here, we're gonna type, would you like to know the store's hours? And we are gonna go ahead and just continue with this multiple choice options 
Our options, of course, would be yes or no. If you wanted to add more context to these, you could. You could say something like, yes, tell me the hours, or no, do not tell me the hours. You'll see here that once you add the multiple choice options, it's going to create a condition statement for each option you input. Now, if they were to say yes, we now want to add a node that will provide the hours for their store. Now, I do have another topic that was already created, which is topic one, which already outlines these stores hours. Now, instead of creating a new text box with these store hours, I'm actually just gonna have this topic redirect to that topic. The reason this is important is because say the hours were to change, I only have to change the hours in that one topic, topic one. If I had put it in both spots, then I'd have to remember to update multiple topics. I'm gonna go ahead and add this to all the other store options as well, so I will be right back. So I just updated this topic and I'm realizing that there is a better way to do this. You can see that this is now very large and it's very repetitive, that these three different condition statements are all pretty much identical. And so I'm actually gonna change the logic and I wanna show you how I'm doing that in the Microsoft Copilot Studio. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this node here from all of the conditions and I'm gonna go ahead and add it here where all three of them will feed into this. So now that I've deleted this redirect node, let's go ahead and consolidate all of these conditions into one. So that way it's not so big, it's not as confusing to look at. So I'm gonna go ahead and select add node and you can actually find that there's a add a condition here. You'll also notice that each question that we created saved our response as a different variable. This is variable one, this is variable two, and this is variable three. Now we want the address topic to be shared if any of these are yes. So in our condition that we're creating, I'm gonna go ahead and select set variable one if variable one is equal to yes or let me change this to or variable two is equal to yes. And lastly, or variable three is equal to yes. If any of these are to be true, we want this topic to direct to our address topic. Let's go ahead and add that redirect now. If we go ahead and select plus. Again, we're gonna go down to topic management go to another topic, and we're looking for our lesson one topic. Now I can remove all of these three repetitive conditions. You can do that by selecting the three dots and then selecting delete on that node. You'll see here that it is already beginning to look better. Now it is time to test this topic. So if you do not have this chat window automatically pulled up, in the bottom left hand corner you can select test your chat bot this is going to reopen this window and is going to show your start of conversation message once again you'll see here some of the phrases that are automatically put in for this topic things like find my nearest store or check a store location let's go ahead and type find a store to trigger this topic you'll see we now have our different options the redmond the seattle or the kirkland location let's go ahead and say we are looking for the redmond location you can see by these check marks throughout the process, it has completed this, completed this, and we are now on our next question. Would you like to know the store hours? Yes, we'd like to know the store hours. And here we are, you can see that it now did the redirect and what it is showing here is actually from our topic one topic. There are quite literally endless possibilities on the different topics and redirects you can use to create a fully fledged bot. And now with Copilot being integrated and replacing Power Virtual Agents, you can use the generative AI capabilities automatically. If you have a Power Virtual Agents bot currently in use, you actually just got a free little upgrade. Now imagine you go through all of this work creating a custom Copilot. You would hate to find out that you are not using Copilot correctly and not getting the answers you want. It's sad to say, but most people are not using Copilot effectively and getting everything they can out of the tool. Let me tell you about the five most important things you need to know when using Copilot. My name is Griffin Lickfeld, the host of Citizen Developer. Thank you for sticking to end the video. And as always, I'm excited to connect with you guys in the next one.